Good morning, one and all. Another blessed day to be found in the house of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. This morning, uh, our pastor is still on vacation, so I bring you greetings on his behalf and on his own personal behalf as well as that as the board here we want to thank all of you for your support during his time of grief he's asked me to expre express his sincere thanks and that he's truly indeed grateful for your support and your prayers during this time. So on his behalf, I ask that you will continue to pray for him, as well as all the others who are bereaved at this time. I believe that our dear brother Atheli would want us, would want me to convey his thanks to you, those who kept him in their thoughts and prayers during his period of grief. We continue to pray for him and on behalf of the board we express our support or continued support for those who grieve. Um, it seems like the angel of death has not left us as yet and we are still grieving the loss of Sister Jeffers and his husband. We want to let her know that we are with her at this time with our thoughts and praise. The pastor has also asked me to remind her that he's praying for her and that she has his support. We ask that our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ will comfort each and every one of you and that his strength is made whole in our weaknesses. So this morning, even though we are sorrowful, even though we've been struck with losses, we want to give God thanks and praise. As always, we lift up our hearts to him and we give thanks. So this morning, our chairperson would be none other than our dear sister Deborah James. I invite her to come and carry on. A blessed good morning to the church family. It's so good to see each and every one of you this morning. God has been good to us. And this morning we've come to praise him and to glorify his name. Matthew chapter 11 verse 28 says, Come unto me all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. This morning I invite you to take a rest in Jesus. Take a rest from the worries about bills, about health issues, about the things that are going on at work. Take a rest from all the worries that we may be taking on because of the situation going on in Barbados and with our young people. Take a rest from every single thing this morning and let us focus on Jesus. Let us take that rest in him. He invites us to come on to him with our burdens and to cast them on him. So this morning as we look to praise the Lord, let us throw off every weight that is besetting us. Let us focus on him as we look to praise the Lord. And to lead us in worship this morning, we have our dear brother John Bino and his team. Let us worship with him as he comes. And I welcome our pastor Kelman. God bless you. And thank you so much for joining us this morning. Brother John. This morning we want to really focus on, on who God is and what he's done in our lives and we want to give him glory and honor because he deserves it. Every time we come to worship that is, should be our main theme in our lives to worship God and, and tell him who he is. We come sometimes and we enjoy the sounds yes and there's nothing wrong with that but at the end of the day our focus should be on God 
Let's stand as we worship Him this morning. Your Alpha and Omega. We worship You, O oh Lord. We worship You, O oh Lord.
He's worthy to be praised this morning. <clears throat> He's worthy to be praised from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Whether there's an eclipse, He's worthy to be praised. While there's darkness, He's worthy to be praised. And He's promised to be with us. And because He is with us, His presence, His presence is heaven to me. His presence is heaven to us. He's here with us this morning because He's promised to be with us through His Holy Spirit. As we sing this song, let us worship Him. Your presence, your presence is heaven to me. Who is like you, Lord, in all the earth? Matchless love and beauty, endless worth. Nothing in this world can satisfy. Jesus, you're the cup that would run dry. Your presence is heaven to me. of my heart and of my soul in my weakness you are merciful redeemer of my past and present wrong holder of my future days to come your presence is
presence is heaven to me. Aren't we grateful this morning for the fact that Jesus is the cup that will not run dry? We're so glad this morning to focus on him. And we want to be thinking, you know, one day, I got about four phone calls in one day from different people that told me, and I found it strange because some of them are people that I was close to, Deborah, you need to rest yourself. And I was like, okay, but the fourth, my third, fourth phone call, I said, well, are you definitely speaking to me? And so this is something you need to do. But I'm not only talking about physical rest this morning. We need rest for our souls. We need rest for our souls. We need to be able to cast it on Jesus so that we can relax and know that God is in control. And this morning, as we look to pray, we want everyone, as, a, as our brother Roy Thornhill comes to pray, you know within your heart what you need to cast off, what you need to hand over fully to Jesus. Because sometimes we think we can handle it all. If we do enough, if we go a little bit more, we can handle it. We can deal with it. And it's making us stressed out. It is making us that when we lay down at night, we can't sleep properly. It is making our bodies sick. And so we need to cast it off. Let us, as we pray this morning, whether you need to cry, whether you need to run about, however you need to cast it off, cast it off. Let Jesus take it over this morning. And we're going to ask our brother Roy to come and to lead us in prayer as we also pray. And we need to just let it go. Brother Roy. Good morning, church family. Let us pray. Gracious God and kind eternal Father in heaven, you are creator, sustainer, and provider. And this morning, Lord, we bow in your awesome presence, dear God. We move above the heavens to the highest heaven, dear God, to approach your throne, dear God. And we ask, dear God, that you would look down upon us in love, mercy, and compassion. We first acknowledge who you are, the Sovereign One, the Holy One, the Righteous One, the Omnipotent, Omniscient One, dear God, and we bow in your presence. We confess our sins before you, Lord. Those we have confessed, those we have sinned, dear God, knowingly or unknowingly, we confess them before you. And we seek your forgiveness, Lord, and we seek your guidance, dear God, in the name of Jesus. Lord, we are living in some very desperate and troubling times, dear God. And if your Holy Spirit does not lead and direct and guide, dear God, we will fall under the arms of the enemy, dear God. But we are your children, dear God, and you have selected us even before we were born, dear God. And as we surrender to you, dear God, we ask, Holy Spirit, that you would lead, guide, and you would protect us from all danger, from all perils, from the hand of the enemy, dear God. Father, this morning, our hearts are overburdened, dear God, at the youth of this country, dear God. And Lord, youth worldwide, dear God, Lord, they are committing all atrocities, dear God. Name. Innocent people, dear God, are losing their lives at their hands, dear God. And in the name of Jesus, we rebuke the forces of darkness and of evil, and we release the power of the Most High God on this universe this morning, dear God, and that the, the enemy, dear God, will flee, dear God, and righteous people, dear God, will come forward and come forth, dear God, and release the name and the power of Almighty God. Lord, we do not utilize a quarter of the power that you have instilled into us. And we ask, dear God, that this day there will be a change, dear God, that we will go and we will proclaim that Jesus is Lord, yes, Lord. Savior of the world, dear God. And there's none other, dear God, who can save us but the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We ask, Holy Spirit, that you will take complete control of this service this morning. Whatever is done may be done to the honor and glory of your name. We love you, we adore you, and we worship you because you have been so good to us, dear God. Take full and total control. In Jesus' wonderful and precious name, amen. 
sing it because you're asked to sing it because he's indeed Lord and he's indescribable he's a God of all gods and we need to remember that we need to allow him to be Lord of our lives because sometimes we sing it but He's not really Lord. He's not taken full control. We've not given our lives to him to be Lord. Lord means that he could do anything he wants with me. Let us worship him. Continue to worship him. Because he is Lord. He's indescribable. of heights to the depths of the sea creations revealing your majesty from the colors of fall to the fragrance of spring every creature unique in the song that it sings all exclaiming indescribable uncontainable you place the stars in the sky and you know them by name you are amazing God all powerful untamable awesome we fall to our knees and we humbly proclaim you are Every lightning bolt where it should go Or seen heavenly storehouses laden with snow Who imagined the sun and give 
amazing God sent his son to die for our sins and the Bible says that he shed his blood on Calvary and the songwriter penned these wonderful what can wash away my sin nothing but the blood of Jesus what can make me whole again nothing but the blood of Jesus oh praise God Wash away my sin, nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is the blood that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my pardon this I see Nothing but the blood of Jesus For my cleansing this my plea Nothing but the blood of Jesus Oh precious is the blood Jesus, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Oh, other found I know, nothing but the more oh, precious in the flow. In the 
blood in the soul cleansing blood of the lamb are your garments spotless are they white as snow are you washing the blood of the lamb oh are you washing nothing but the blood of Jesus the Bible says that when he went to Calvary they took spikes drove them in his hands and his feet and the soldier took a spear and pierced his side and outflowed blood and water that was for me that was for you and I thank God this morning we can say he has saved me I can say he has saved me he has saved me. Amen. Amen. He has washed me in his precious blood. I don't know where I would be had he not saved me. Oh, when I think about the Lord, how he raised me, how he's keeping me, I want to give him glory and honor and praise. When I think about the Lord, how he saved me, how he raised me, how he healed me with the Holy Ghost, how he healed me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how he picked me up and turned me around, how he placed my feet. Let's sing that again. When I think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He fills me with the Holy Ghost, how He heals me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my feet on solid ground. Wanna shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and all the praise, makes me wanna shout, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, Lord you're worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and all the praise, makes me wanna shout, makes me wanna shout. Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory, of all the honor, and all the praise. Makes me want to shout. think about the Lord, how He saved me, how He raised me, how He fills me with the Holy Ghost, how He heals me to the uttermost. When I think about the Lord, how He picked me up and turned me around, how He placed my on solid ground it makes me want to shout hallelujah thank you Jesus Lord you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise it makes me 
Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. It makes me want to shout, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, Lord, you're worthy of all the glory and all the honor and all the praise. with our fellow, fellow brothers and sisters. And to give you the official welcome this morning, I'm going to call none other than Brother Marlon Yard to come. You may be seated as he comes to do the official welcome this morning. Good morning, family. Good morning, visitors. It's good to see all of you this morning. As you may be aware, I was off island on holiday, so I missed two Sundays of fellowship with you. I missed you all. Nonetheless, you were in my thoughts and prayers, especially our pastor Elcock, who lost two family members on the same day. There's a saying, you never miss the water till the well runs dry. My days away from you and the pastor's sudden loss of loved ones got me thinking about the importance of fellowship and family and their interconnectivity. As members of God's family, fellowship is all about relationship our relationship with God and each other. This connectedness, this fellowship, guarantees our survival in this uncaring and selfish world we live in. I always look forward to our fellowship, and I ask you to cherish each other and cherish this time when we can come together to worship and praise our Savior. Our fellowship with each other reinforces our commitment to God and, it, and at the same time makes us accountable to each other. The scripture says, as iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens another. My condolences again to the pastor and his family. Enough of my maunderings. I'm here to welcome you to our Sunday morning worship service. I'm overjoyed to be here. God is good. On behalf of the pastor and board members and members of the Ruby Church of Nazarene, I want to thank you for being here. Thank you for choosing Ruby and for being here this morning. I take this opportunity to welcome those who have joined our services via cyberspace, any members or associates who are watching from home because you could not make it today, welcome. We miss you. First time visitors. Octavia, you know I know you. First time visitors, when I call your name, 
I want you to stand and remain standing until we give you our special Ruby Nazarene welcome. I have one card today, Octavia Gibson. Octavia, hey, anybody invited you or you just came? You just came. She is a member of Beulah Methodist, but every now and then you can pass only in August. <laughs> but nonetheless, we are glad to see you, Octavia. We're, we're good friends. We work together. She's at the Central Bank, and we are always connected with each other. Don't sit down yet. Um, are there any first-time visitors who have not filled out a form? Please stand. Any? Have I missed anybody? Let's give Octavia a special Ruby welcome. <laughs> Octavia, feel free to get more information about our, serv about our services from the ushers. We know you by name, so you're a friend, and we look forward to seeing you again. And when you do return, please bring a friend or family member. Good. If you have any visitors who are here on a second or third visit, any members or associates who have not been here for a while, anyone who is traveling outside of the country, we welcome you. And Sister Stephanie, don't think I didn't see you. I see you behind there. Welcome, Sister Stephanie. Those of you who will be leaving us for a while, we look forward to welcoming you back when you return. Now, this is an important part of, of, of my welcome all the time. Turn to the person next to you, look into their eyes, and say, now listen to what I'm going to ask you to say first. True Christian fellowship is loving you as I love myself. Now, folks, we ain't finished yet, you know. We ain't finished yet. This is, the, this is the important part. I want you to look into their eyes again and say, I love you. And I want you to mean it, and I want you all to work on it. Pastor once said, you all not finished loving each other? Can't stop. A pastor once said, if we are truly to experience fellowship as God intends us to, we need to live out 10 commandments of fellowship extracted from Romans 12 verses 9 to 21. Now, these are the the, the commandments. We need to love, honor, worship with, and be gracious to one another. Not to be spiteful to one another, but empathize, get along with, be humble, be honest, and be, and be good to one another. We need to love, honor, worship with, and be gracious to one another, not spiteful to one another, but empathize, get along with, be humble, be honest, and be good to one another. Let us love one another, people. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye love one another. 
I welcome you all. I love you all. Thank you. I want to thank Brother Marlon for that welcome. And I don't know about you, but I feel welcomed. Yes, I feel welcome. I feel good to be, to be here this morning. Um, this morning, as we look now, we're looking to give the morning's offering. And our tech team is going to play the song for us, Great I Am. I'm going to ask the ushers to get in place. And as they get in place and as you take out your offering, I want you also, as you're giving your offering, to see it as a symbol of giving over to God as well. Even as we give in an act of worship, let us also give over to him. All the things that are besetting us, all the things that we're worried about, the things that are making us stressed, that we're feeling all our shoulders tensed up, our back is hurting. Sometimes it's not just a backache. Sometimes all the stress is accumulating in the back and in the muscles. So as we give over this morning to the Lord, as we give in worship, let us also give to him so that we may find rest. I'm going to ask the ushers now to get in place and for our tech team to play as we look to worship the Lord in our giving. What is NMI? NMI is a vital part of the Church of the Nazarene a volunteer movement to mobilize the church in missions around the world. Why NMI? We want everyone everywhere to know the good news of Jesus. NMI is united in vision, all ages involved in action. Imagine the impact if we work together. Who is NMI? You are NMI. Together, we are NMI. Good morning, church. Let's pray. Our Heavenly Father, Father, we come before you to give you thanks for the opportunity, O oh Lord God, to give you praises for all the blessings that you have bestowed upon us. O oh Lord God, we give you thanks for it. And Father, today we also want to give you thanks for the opportunity to be able to give back some of what you have bestowed upon us. O oh Lord God, we pray that it will be news for the advancement for your church, O oh Lord God. And we ask these things in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
I'm sure that you would have read the, you may be seated, I'm sure you would have read the on-screen announcement. Well, I want to add just a few announcements, maybe two of them. Here at Ruby, um, very often um, we start out our school years, school year with prayers. We bring up the children and the students and the teachers and we pray for them. And as usual, sometimes when we have our successes, we give you a chance to share in the success of our boys and girls, our young men and women. So we just, we wouldn't want to be long um, this morning, but I want Melissa to stand, Melissa Yard to stand. Um, Melissa has successfully completed her degree. She has received honors, a BSc honors with honors and accounts. So let's give Melissa a very rousing round of applause. Now, we all know Melissa, we wouldn't ask you to come down, Melissa, we wouldn't do that to you. You get your hugs and kisses from all the others when you come down after the church service. Kyle is not here, but he too has successfully completed his CAPE examinations and he's been awarded um, grade ones and two, two ones and a two in his CAPE. So in his absence, we'll just... Um, quickly, I want to give a word to the other parents. Um, most of the time we applaud the academic success of our student. But then there's something, the technical and vocational skill people. But I'm going to put the blame not on the church, but on you parents. You don't tell us when your children have succeeded in, in those areas. So don't keep it from us. When they have succeeded in those areas, you tell us so that we can be part of their success. Because we know that life is made up of all different facets. And each individual is worthy in the sight of our blessed Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So don't be afraid. We love you. You come and tell us and we will celebrate with you. May God bless you and keep you. Back over. As a family, we not only mourn together, but we celebrate together. And it's good to know that as a family, we can share with one another. We're looking now to the word of God. And our Bible reading today is taken from Psalm 62, verse 1 to 12, and it will be read by our brother, David Griffith. And as David comes, let us look to the word of God, Psalm 62, verse 1 to 12. Good morning to the church. The Bible reading will be taken from Psalm 62, Verse 1 to 12. Reading. Truly, my soul silently waits for God. From him comes my salvation. He alone is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be greatly moved. As long as you, how long will you attack a man? You will be slain, all of you. Like a leaning wall and a towering top fence. They only consult to cast him down from his high position. They delight in lies. They bless with their mouth, but their curse inwardly seal up. My soul waits silently for God alone. My expectation is from him. He is my rock and my salvation. He is my defense. I shall not be moved. And God is my salvation and my glory, the rock of my strength, and my refuge is in God. Trust in him at all times, dear people. Pour out your heart before him. God is a rapture for us, Selah. Surely men of low degree are a vapor. Men of high degree are a lie. If they are weighed on the scales, they, all, they are altogether lighter than vapor. Do not trust in the oppression, nor vainly hope in robbery if riches increase. Do not set your heart on them. 
God has spoken once, twice I have heard this, that power belongs to God. Also to you, O God, O Lord, belongs, belongs mercy, for you render to each other according to his work. Here at the reading. Amen. Remain standing. We thank Brother David so much for his reading of the word. We ask God's blessing upon it. Remain standing as we look to sing the song, Worthy is the Lamb. And after this, um, Brother Clinton will come to introduce our speaker for the morning. We're going to sing the song now, Worthy is the Lamb.
to speak to us this morning is Pastor Anderson Kelman. He's a pastor of the Bank Hall Nazarene Church. Psychologist by profession. He's a husband of one wife, Maureen, and two children. And he's no stranger to us here at Ruby. I believe those old stagers like me would be familiar with him even in the time of Pastor C, Reverend Orlando C. So he's no stranger to us. And I'm not going to labor him because I am a strict believer in good wine needs no bush. So I'm not going to ferment him with much talk. So Brother Kelvin, your congregation, congregation. Thank you very much. So good to be with you this morning and um, thanks for your reception. Just want to read for you from 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and just three verses, verse 12, verse 13, and verse 14. 2 Chronicles, the seventh chapter, verse 12, verse 13, and verse 14. And the Lord appeared to Solomon by night and said unto him, I have heard thy prayer. And I've chosen this place to myself for a house of sacrifice. If I shall have heaven and there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, verse 14, if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, they will hear from heaven. I will forgive their sin. I will heal their land. Father, we give you thanks even now for this, your word. May the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our redeemer. Amen. You may be seated. Someone want give me a shout there in the congregation? The trumpets were blaring. The people's voices were raised in unison as they sang praises to Almighty God. Not an inhabitant of Jerusalem could have mistaken that something significant and grand and wonderful had just occurred. For months of toil, the blood, sweat, and tears had given way to a beautiful edifice. It was the occasion of the dedication of the temple. That which David had begun, Solomon had now completed. Solomon, a son of difficult circumstances. And we all know so very well that Solomon was the, the son of, of Bathsheba, a woman that David had taken and in a very adulterous relationship had borne a son which had died, and now the second son uh, was Solomon. And I want to say to you, brothers and sisters, this morning that it does not matter how we begin. What matters most uh, is how we end. I want to declare to you that even though that, that this relationship with Bathsheba was won, that God had not uh, uh, approved of in the initial stages. I want to say to you that even though that may have occurred, uh, that God turned things around uh, for Solomon. I want to say to you today as well that, that it doesn't matter what you may have been through or what you may be going through, what difficult circumstances uh, that may have characterized your life. Uh, I want to declare to you that the God uh, that we serve uh, is able to 
turn things around in your life. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. For sometimes we believe that the end is near. Sometimes we believe that we're all back against the rope. Sometimes we believe that no change is going to come. But I declare to you today that, that your morning of rejoicing will come for the God that we serve. He is well able to. And so the son of a very difficult circumstance had completed the temple. But as I analyze this text, beginning at chapters four, uh, uh, five, and coming right through, there's something strange about this moment of celebration. For in chapters five, we read that Solomon calls the people to a great convocation. He says to them, I want you to come out. I want you to, to celebrate the, 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 the opening or, or, or the finishing of this temple. I want you to bring your, 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 your instruments. I want the singers to raise their voices. I want there to be a great time as we celebrate this, this great occurrence in the life of the Israelites. And so they came out and they began to sing and they began to dance. And we're told that the glory of God. God came down as a cloud and even the priest could not minister or oh, church I pray for the for the days to return when the glory of God will just captivate the house I pray for those days to return when, when, they can, when there's no, no preaching just the, just the glory of the God of God enthralls us and enwraps us and the glory of God becomes that which sinks upon us as we give God praise and worship church I pray for those glory days to return the church of the Nazarene was formed in the glory barns listen church Phineas Breezy those guys talked about as they sang the songs of Zion they just felt the glory the kabod of God just coming down I pray for those days uh, to, to once again uh, return not just to church of Nazarene but churches all around uh, where we can sense the very presence uh, and the very power of God uh, just permeating uh, through the sanctuary when those who are, are sick of any kind, any malady can, can be healed because the glory of God is in the house. Somebody say amen. Uh, somebody say praise the Lord. Uh, oh, the glory of God came down uh, as they began to celebrate and in chapter 6 and verse 4 we, we, we see Solomon, Solomon com commending them for the work which they had done and this church, this, this was no, this was no, was no easy feat because we're told that for the time they were released from Egypt until now, there, there was no real place, uh, no real house, uh, no real tabernacle or temple for God. Uh, and, and David had purpose uh, in his heart; uh, he was going to build a house uh, for the Lord. Uh, but because of his hands being mixed with blood, God said, "Listen, David, uh, you're not going to be able to complete it." Uh, and so Solomon comes along uh, after several years of hard work and they finished the temple and so he commends them and says thanks to almighty God for what they were able to accomplish there was the attitude of gratitude uh, sometimes in our church uh, you know we we we, we benefit from the blessings of almighty God but it seems as though the more he blesses us the more we want there, there seemed to be an insatiable appetite for the more. Uh, and sometimes we, we don't ever recognize the importance uh, of saying thanks to Almighty God for all that He is doing or has done for us. Uh, but I want to declare to you, church, that we ought to be a thankful people. Uh, and so the man Solomon, uh, he commended the people uh, for what they had done uh, as they sang praises to God. Uh, and then in verse 13 of chapter 6, uh, he began to pray a prayer of consecration. And one would have thought that for such a great and grand event, 
that Solomon's prayer may have gone something like, Lord, we give you thanks for all that you have accomplished in our midst. We thank you, Lord, for the difficult times where we worked hard and worked late. But Lord, we give you thanks for the completion. But it seems as though as I, as I began to read this prayer of consecration in, in the midst of this celebration, that Solomon's thoughts were, were elsewhere. For, for somehow it seemed as though he was predicting the times when the people will fall away from God. He was asking God to be merciful to them in advance. You read it for yourself and hear what Solomon said. He says, uh, uh, when, when they go into battle and they're taken captive by the enemy, Lord, uh, if they turn from their sin, will you hear them? Uh, and he goes on and on and, and speaks about, about repentance and restoration. Uh, for some of it seemed to me as though that Solomon uh, expected that even though God uh, had so blessed them uh, in terms of the dedication of the temple, uh, the people of God at some time uh, would have fallen away from God uh, and church uh, before we are quick to condemn the Israelites. Let me declare to, to all of us that we know there are times when God blesses us and blesses us abundantly but then sometimes we still turn our backs on God. It seems as though that that up and down ride uh, of, of, the, of the Israelites has, has also characterized us as believers uh, because we know that God is great. Uh, we know that God is good. Uh, but sometimes we still want to do our own thing. Uh, sometimes uh, it seems as though the more God blesses us, uh, the more we go in the opposite direction. Uh, and so the man Solomon begins uh, to, to pray for the people, uh, a prayer of intercession, uh, a prayer of asking God uh, that Lord, uh, you help them. Uh, I, I somehow know that there are times uh, when they will leave you and they'll go astray. But Lord, uh, as long as they are willing to repent, Lord, uh, would you hear them? Uh, would you answer them? Uh, would you heal them? Uh, and I say the same thing this morning to, to Ruby. Uh, all there are times uh, when we will go astray. But my prayer today is that once we repent uh, and turn around, uh, that God will hear us uh, and forgive us uh, and restore us. I don't know about you, but, but I can speak for myself. For, for there are times uh, when I've turned my back on God, uh, but I thank God today that he is indeed uh, a merciful God. You uh, know, church, this is mine. Uh, I remember when God called me to ministry, Brother Marlon, uh, and I said to God, Lord, ministry, that is everything I don't want to be. I mean, God had given and blessed in so many ways, but as far as I was concerned, my, my sights were set. Uh, I knew where I was going. Uh, I wanted to become an engineer, and no one could stop that. See, Augustine has signaled that I was accepted, uh, and I was going in that direction, uh, but God laid his hand upon me, church, uh, and I turned my back on God uh, and walk the other way but God uh, is a good God church uh, and our God uh, he's not a small minded God uh, he, he, he stood there and walked with me through those difficult months of my rebellion uh, but when I turned uh, and said Lord forgive me uh, he was there to hear me uh, and to restore me back to, to where he wanted me to be church uh, he is a great and awesome God uh, he is a merciful God uh, it doesn't matter where you've been uh, it doesn't matter what what you have done if we turn our back he will restore us and he will reclaim us and give us that which he wants has in store for us believers so 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 in this midst of celebration solomon sensed in his heart that the people of god at some point in time in their journey would turn and walk the other way. As I read this text over and over again, I thought to myself that, you know, there, there's so much application in, in this text for, for us as believers. I just want to share uh, three very quick points with you today. The first point I want to share with you is the proclivity of us to lose our focus and to sin. The proclivity to lose focus and to sin. 
Solomon was acknowledging that the history of the Israelites was one of obedience and blessings, but also disobedience and, and curses. He was recognizing that throughout their journey in the wilderness, that that played out as they murmured against Moses, as they were callous with the golden calf, as they took what was the accursed thing as Achan did and was defeated by I. You see, church, uh, as I said to you before, this, uh, this story was a, was a recurring story. For, for even though God had blessed them, uh, when they came up on difficulties, they, they began to murmur against Moses. Uh, you, you bring us here in the wilderness to die, Moses. Uh, we were better off in Egypt. You can imagine that? Ungrateful bunch of people. They cried out to God. They said, Lord, it is too heavy for us. But at the first sign of trouble, they began to murmur. Or as Moses ascended the hill, the mountain, he was gone for a little while. They decided, you know what, well, Moses is gone, so we better have something to worship here. So they began to, to form the, the golden calf from all the jewelry which they had brought from Egypt. But, and they began to worship. When Moses came down, he was enraged, could not believe that a people who were so blessed by God uh, could, could create uh, a, a, an, an image and, and worship a people who ought to know differently. Uh, but, 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 but it seemed as though that, 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 that constant high and low uh, became a reality. And so they began to worship the calf or, or when they, they took over Jericho and God said listen do not take anything uh, but this guy he can decide you know what uh, these uh, these Babylonian garments these are too beautiful uh, I can't they can't destroy them uh, I must keep some for myself and my boy went and hit him in the camp and a few days after, they had a battle with a small town called I. They had just defeated Jericho, that great uh, uh, city. But now this small, uh, this small town called I, uh, they, they whipped the Israelites because there was sin in their camp. I declare to you today, church, my brothers and my sisters, that the God that we serve is a God who is a holy God. He is a God that wants his children to be holy as well. We see this holiness unto the Lord is a what? A watchword and what? Holiness unto the Lord as we we will sing it, we will shout it, we will preach it, and what else? We will live in holiness unto the Lord. And these folk, as far as they were concerned, they knew better than God. The proclivity, the bent to go the other way. Even though God had blessed them abundantly. And, and church, I want you to understand something here as well too. Because I, I, I hear the apostle Paul as he, as he talks about that struggle. He says, the good that I want to do, I, I, I find myself not doing. But the evil things that, that I don't want to do, they, they, they become so easy to, to be done. And, and he says, who shall deliver me? In verse 40 of, of chapter 7 of, of Romans, uh, who shall deliver me from this body of death? Uh, but, but, but then I hear in, in, in chapter 8, he says, there is therefore now uh, no condemnation. You see, church, what the Apostle Paul was saying is that there's something in all of us that wants to go against God. He calls it the body of death. I mean, to understand the symbolism, though, because in those days, the mode of capital punishment was to strap a dead body onto a man. If you were being, were, were being punished by the state for some, for some crime that, that deserved, deserved death, they would strap this dead body onto you and, and all the maggots that you name, all the, all, the, all the stuff that oozes from dead bodies would be all over you. You ever left your... Not you, but let me talk with me. Maybe a day goes by and rush to the house some morning and you leave the garbage without taking it to the can outside. And then you come up in the evening and see some of those small things walk across the floor. Not, not you, right? Not you. 
<laughs> Imagine having a dead body strapped on you. Can't get away from it. Can't put it off. But the toxins of that dead body eventually will, will seep into, into your skin and, 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 you, and it will kill you. It was a painful death. And the apostle Paul, he likens uh, that, that up and down, that, that, that sense of, of being trapped uh, into doing what was wrong, even though God was blessing uh, to that being strapped with, the, with his dead body. But then he says, listen, uh, I want you to understand uh, that there's therefore now no condemnation. Uh, it seemed as though that the apostle Paul uh, had made a transition. Uh, he had flipped the switch uh, and something different uh, had dawned in his life. Uh, and I declare to you, church, uh, that the remedy for that up and down uh, relationship with Jesus Christ uh, is a full consecration uh, of our lives to him. Uh, the apostle Paul says there is therefore now uh, uh, no condemnation to those uh, who are in Jesus Christ. Uh, and then verse uh, chapter 12 he says uh, I beseech you therefore brethren uh, by the mercies of God uh, you present your bodies uh, a living sacrifice. Uh, listen church uh, that the remedy for, for this up and down relationship relationship is a is a full consecration uh, of our lives uh, to Jesus Christ uh, where he comes in uh, and he changes our relationship uh, he removes that bent uh, to do what is wrong uh, and in that instant we are set on a way to, to, to give God all the praise and all the worship uh, listen uh, I want to declare to you today that, that there is victory over sin uh, and that victory uh, is purchased uh, by the blood of Jesus Christ we don't have to live uh, an up and down Christian life we don't have to be to be one day good and next day bad. We don't have to, to, to be one day in church and the next couple of weeks we're, we're not in church anymore. We can live a life of victory unto Jesus Christ if we consecrate ourselves fully and unreservedly to him. I declare to you church today that the God that we serve he is able to take us and to transform us. I think about that man John Newton on the docks. The word of God it says to us, sorry, that, that he was a, a slave trader. He was, he, he sold slaves. He had no regard for God nor for man. But the word of God, we, we, we reminded him as we read it, that one day he came in contact with Jesus Christ and his life was transformed and he penned the song, Amazing Grace. How sweet the song that saved a wretch like me. Listen, church, I don't care where you're from. I don't care what you've done. The grace of God, which have appeared to all man can transform your life he can change you to the uttermost totally and unreservedly Solomon recognized and acknowledged that there was a proclivity of the people to sin even though God had, had blessed them in an abundant way yet they seem to have this up and down kind of relationship but secondly, he also showcased the power of prayer. The word of God in verse 12 tells us, The Lord appeared to Solomon and had a conversation with him. And it says he appeared to Solomon at night. As I thought about that appearing of God to Solomon at night, I thought to myself, maybe God appeared to him when the, the, the musicians had all gone home. God appeared to Solomon when they were not uh, in all jumping and celebrating as they were during, during the day. God appeared uh, to, to Solomon when the singers weren't singing anymore. And I'm not suggesting for one second church that, that God does not appear to us during some service or, or, or during the, the celebration of, of, of songs. I'm not saying that at all, but I'm saying that sometimes uh, we can sing the song, sometimes we can, we, can, we can celebrate, but we can miss the voice of God. You don't agree with me? You thought Elijah. Elijah was listening for, for God in the, in the, in the whirlwind. Mm, God was not there. And then he was listening for God in the, in the earthquake. 
But God wasn't there either. But then the still small voice is when he heard God. And sometimes it's the midnight hour that God appears uh, to us uh, and God talks with us sometimes. It's, it's when it seems as though that, that we are at all weakest and it seems as if uh, that we want to give up. It's when God steps in uh, and showcases his, uh, himself uh, and, and is strong. Uh, sometimes it's in the, it's in the midst of the, of the turbulence because uh, I am told that, that the midnight hour is perhaps the darkest hour of the night. Uh, and I think about those those, uh, those boys who were in the dungeon, uh, the word of God says, uh, at the midnight hour, they began to sing praises uh, unto God. Uh, I say to you, church, uh, that sometimes when our souls feel crushed, uh, we ought to sing unto God. Uh, sometimes when no one is around, uh, there's no symbols, uh, there's no organ, uh, we ought to sing unto God, for, for it is in those moments that God speaks to us. Uh, and, 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 and so Solomon uh, says uh, in, in the word that God came uh, at the midnight hour, and God began to speak to Solomon uh, and I say to you church uh, uh, this morning uh, that God wants to speak to every one of us uh, and I want to say to you that God wants to have uh, an encounter with his children uh, with his people uh, the God that we serve uh, he wants to tabernacle with us once read an article that said if God were to remove his Holy Spirit from the, from the church that the paper say of the work will continue I don't know about you, but imagine that great and awesome God that our brother talked about in the song service. The one who is king of kings and lord of lords. The, the, the one who is, who is majestic, who sits on the circles of the earth. That God, we don't have to make an appointment to see him as we have to do with our worldly leaders. But, but our God, he is ready and willing and able to, to encounter us as long as we are willing to listen and wait for him. The song says we wait for him. We wait for him in a dry and thirsty land. We wait for him, church. I want to say that God wants to meet with us. And Solomon prayed and God came and God met with him. The, the power of prayer. And church, let me also remind you that the, the God that, that, that we serve, he is a God who loves us. And the word of God tells us that if our earthly fathers know how to give good gifts, how much more our heavenly father understand this, that the God that we serve, he loves us to every fault that's why he died on Calvary that we may be redeemed that we may be reconciled back to the father through him and through his blood he loves us and, and, and so Solomon demonstrated that when we pray and believe that God responds to us I, I, the book of Joshua in chapters 10, God says to, to Joshua, they were fighting the Gibeonites. And uh, it says to us that the sun was beginning to set. And Joshua prayed and the sun stood still for 24 hours. But it also says to us as we read that text on further, that what was most remarkable was not the fact the sun stood still, but the fact that on that day, God listened to a man. Wow. Wow. The God of all gods, the king of all kings, listened to Joshua as he prayed. Some years ago, Six years ago, thereabouts, we had uh, our second child. And the uh, prognosis was not so good. The doctor said, well, you know, uh, young, well, he said, young man, he said, he said he, he, as, you, as you know, you're not a, a, a young guy anymore. He said, and your wife is just about your age as well, too, so this is what we call a geriatric pregnancy. Imagine your daughter telling you that. He said, and the way all this baby is lying, it seems as though that, 
that, that there may be some kind of, of deformity uh, in the making here. And he asked us, he said, what do you want to do? We said, well, it doesn't matter, but because, because we're going to love the baby anyhow. And, and, and then he said it to, to us, you know, he said, he said, he said listen, uh, I, I, I do have good news for you. Because some things are missed here. And church, we began to pray. We began to pray, and it wasn't in the, in, in the, in the service that God spoke to us. It was by, by my bedside one morning that I read the book of Isaiah, and God told me exactly what would happen. And the Saturday morning, I went to church, uh, the early morning, preaching, and I shared with the saints uh, what God has said to me. And as God spoke to me, well, this little boy, God said, the little boy is great. Nothing's wrong with the little boy. He's going to be fine. In, in excellent one time, we're going to have a, a, a little boy. And this is what will happen to this little boy. And, I, and I'm watching God's word work itself out in young Lazarus' life. You see, church, there's power in prayer. I say to you, church, uh, that when we believe God, things uh, will happen in our lives. Uh, when we believe God, he will turn things around. Uh, and that which the enemy may have meant for evil, uh, our God will turn it around. Uh, and he will make it for good. Uh, but we got, we've got to, uh, to spend time in prayer and believe that our God is able, church. Uh, listen, uh, we don't have to fix it. Uh, and little sister said, release it to God. Uh, let it go. Let God do what only God can do. Sometimes we want to tinker with it. We want to help God out. Because, because as far as we are concerned, it's taking too long, man. There must be something I, I, I can do here to, to help God I and mean, we make a mess of things. Not true. But let it go. Lay at the foot of the cross. And the God that we serve in his time, he makes all things beautiful. Sister, you're struggling with that relationship, with that husband, that, that boyfriend. I sit you lay at the foot of the cross. Allow God to work it through. Young man, you're, you're worried about that job, about that promotion. I sit you to lay it at the foot of the cross. Allow God to, to work it through. You're, you're worried about your health. You're, you're so bothered about, about the, the cancers in your family. You're struggling. I declare to you this morning to lay it at the cross. Lay at the foot of the altar allow Jesus Christ to take it uh, and to do only what he can do with it the power of prayer and thirdly the promise of forgiveness and restoration and God says to Solomon in that intimate moment he says, if my people who call upon my name, your virgin says, who are called by my name, but the, the best rendering, if my people who call upon my name, and there's power in the name of Jesus church, there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, the, the name of Jesus can, can, can set the captive free. The, the name of Jesus can, 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 can set the persons at liberty. The, the name of Jesus uh, can, can run away the, the demons. Uh, the name of Jesus uh, can bring our healing. Uh, there's power in the name of Jesus. Uh, if my people uh, uh, who call on my name would humble themselves and prayer humble themselves who would understand that I am Lord, I am God uh, I am in charge of everything uh, who, who would stop trying to, to do my job uh, allow me to do my job uh, if they will humble themselves uh, if they will set themselves uh, and not to allow me to be God and Lord uh, of their lives and seek my face in other words, uh, if they were long after my presence, uh, if they were desire to, 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 to see me and to, and to experience me. When last have you sought 
the presence of Jesus. When last have, have you pushed in? Uh, I'm not talking about in the, in the church service. Uh, I, I know we raise our hands at church and, and we sing, and that's beautiful. But when last did you kneel by your bed and say, Lord, uh, I'm not going to let you go until uh, you speak with me, Lord. Uh, I'm not going to get him, Lord, this, this morning or this night uh, unless I experience uh, your Shekinah glory, Lord. Uh, Father, I'm going to press in with you. I want to stay here until I know for sure that you have come and spoken with me. When last have, have we, in our quiet time, stayed down until God showed up? When last, if my people who are called by my name would humble themselves in prayer and seek my face. Who will press in until they know for sure that something has happened? Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. The promise of forgiveness. You see, church, the challenge here with the Israelites was that they were always moving from blessing to curse. And someone was, 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 was recognizing this, was, was saying to God, Lord, I want you to keep my people focused, Lord. I, I, I want you, Lord, to, to, to when they return, to, to don't cast them off, but, but to come and, and bring them back to where you want them to be, Lord. Uh, I want you, Lord God, to, 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 to be close to the Israelites uh, and to ensure that they do what they are supposed to do. I want them to be focused. And I asked the question this morning to all of us. What is it that God wants you to do what is that God wants me to do what is that God wants us as a church to do but sometimes you become so unfocused and we move away from that which God has called us to do story is told of a small gathering of people the, uh, the, the, the writer Howard Kleinbell tells it in the book Pastor Counseling and Care and he says that, that there was this, this, this uh, little beach off the coast uh, in Australia where, where the northern coast where, where ships were coming with tourists and, and, and little sailboats were coming and they would, and they would hit rocks in, in that bay and there was some, some would go down he said it was, it was a beautiful bay, but the problem was there was a, some rocks in the bay. If you didn't navigate around them very carefully, you could strike them and the boat would go down. And he says these well-meaning group of persons came out and they built a, a little life-saving station. And uh, for a while, if a boat struck the rocks, so down, they'll go out and they will uh, bring the people in and they will wash them off and, and, and give them something to eat and they will make sure that they were, they were restored basically. But as time went by, the story goes on that they, they began to, to build a, a, a bigger station and, and to decorate the walls and to make it look nice and, and homely. And, a, and a, a boat struck the rocks and went down. And, and, and some person said, no, no, we can't bring those persons in here. They called the board meeting and they lost the, the vote. And they said, no, they, they can't come in here. This place is too well uh, decorated now. So a group left that house and built a second house down the beach. And for a while, they too did a great job. They saved lives. But then they too lost their focus. Klein Bell says today, several houses dot the beachfront because they lost their focus. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face. Then will I turn from heaven 
I will heal their, I will forgive their sins. I will heal their land. If my people stay focused on me, their restoration is guaranteed. If my people are willing to repent of their sin and to return, then I will heal and forgive and, and, and restore them. I say to you, church, this morning, at Ruby, I say to you that God wants us to be a life-saving station. And if we are willing to keep focus on God, then God will turn things around for us individually as a church as well. And so today, I want to spend a few moments, if you allow me to, I'm not sure what time you finish in, in, in the prayer of repentance. I want to ask if you would be so willing to just join with me at the altar as we so just pray. I don't want to see any song, but just come quickly as we just spend a few moments in, in prayer. Just, just asking God to forgive us and to, and to restore us. That we can be all that God wants us to be there. The up and down of our lives, the, 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 the here to there, gone tomorrow, that, that, that God would, uh, would allow us to, to become so focused on Him. Hallelujah. And if you can, you just want to stand at the back, that's fine as well. Just want to say a prayer. If my people who are called by name, my name will humble themselves on prayer and seek my face. Then will I hear from heaven and I will heal their land. Hallelujah. Almighty God, we pause today. Lord, this text is a text that gives us a promise, but it's also a text of warning. And I pray, Almighty God, even now, Lord, that first we would acknowledge that we have not been all that we ought to be. Father, we acknowledge today that we have not always been as consistent in our walk as we should be, Lord. There are times, Lord, when we have veered off from the paths that you have called us to, Lord. And Lord, we come this morning, Lord, in this hour, Lord, to repent, Father, of, of every sin, O oh God. We come, O oh Father, to repent, Lord, of every time, Lord, that we have veered away from, from the plain paths you've called us to, Lord. And we ask you, O oh God, to forgive us, Lord, in your mercy. In your loving kindness, Lord, in your care, we ask, Lord God, to release us, Lord, and to, and to restore us, Lord. And Father, we pray this morning in a, very, in a very special way, Lord God, that you will come, Lord, and you will visit with us, Lord Jesus. We need to hear from you, Lord. We need a word, Lord. We need a, a, an encounter with you, Lord Jesus, Lord. We, we need for you to stand, oh God, uh, and speak into our ear to, to tell us, Lord, what we ought to do, Lord Jesus. Father, we, we, we pray this morning that you, Lord God, would, uh, would come, Lord, and, and that, Father, you all would, would stand right next to us, Lord. And, Father, we will know that, that, that you are there, Lord Jesus. Almighty God, today we just want to ask you, Lord God, to restore, Lord, the years that the canker worm and the locust, Lord, have devoured in our lives by our own disobedience, Lord. We, we ask, Lord God, to, to restore those years, Lord Jesus. We ask, Lord God, once again to, to bring us, Lord, back to to, to, to our first love, Lord Jesus, Lord. 
Oh, Father, I pray for the for the excitement of first love Christians, Lord, to permeate Ruby, Lord. I pray, God, for the excitement, oh God, of when we first believed, oh God, to become, Lord, that which characterizes this church, Lord. I pray, God, against every every lukewarm experience, Lord. For, for lukewarmness, Lord, we're not good for juice, Lord, and we're not good for tea, Lord. Oh, give us, oh God, uh, that sense of joy oh glory be to God Father stir our hearts oh God oh Father stir our hearts Lord Lord to praise you Lord and to worship you Lord Father we are tired of the ordinary Lord we need an extraordinary encounter with you Lord Jesus Lord our, our walk has become so ordinary Lord God so normal, oh God. So average, oh God. Lord, we want to be above average believers, Lord. We don't want to be just simply a part of, of the status quo, Lord. We, we want a, a real and current, Lord, experience with you, Lord Jesus. And so gracious God this morning, may this be the beginning of the of the turnaround in our lives, Lord. Lord, we've had many times when you've come and blessed us, you've helped us, Lord. And this is just another time, Lord God, when we will press in a little bit deeper, Lord. When we will stay a little bit more focused with you, Lord Jesus. And Lord, help us, even in our church, to be the life saving station of the community of Ruby and his environs, Lord. May they know, O oh Father, that there's safety in the house, Lord. May they know that there are people in here that love them, Lord Jesus, and, and they can come in wounded and broken and battered. And know, Lord, that they would be taken care of. And the power of you, O oh God, will be mediated through the believers at Ruby. Heal us, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. And Lord, we give you thanks, Lord. We give you praise. Come on, saints. Just, just bless his name. Just bless his name, saints. Just bless his name. Just give him thanks for who he is. Just honor him. Oh, just glorify him. For God is good. He is good and his mercies endure forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Those uh, he have redeemed from the hand of the enemy. Uh, Lord, we thank you today, Lord. Uh, Lord, as Solomon prayed that the people of God uh, will remain obedient and focus, O oh God, on the mission. Uh, may we too remain obedient and focus as we become or continue to be the life-saving station of Ruby. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. We thank our brother for that stirring message. As the Lord has allowed him to port himself, Lord, we ask that you would refill him another time. Bring him unctionized in the spirit. Lord, and we give thanks and praise for his wonderful works. The way how he has worked this morning. We give thanks. We give praise. May God bless you and keep you. We thank the Lord this morning for bringing his word. And... I believe that each and every one of us has taken our portion. I've taken my portion. I know that you've taken your portion. Because we all needed something this morning. And God knows what we needed. And he gave it through his word. Some part of that word must have ministered to you this morning. So we want to take it. And we want to allow God to continue his work. This morning, just a few announcements that you would have seen some on the notice boards. Please remember... On the 9th of September, 
the prayer breakfast, the men's prayer breakfast right here at the church. So don't forget on the 9th of September. Also remember on Tuesday night, Bible study. Don't forget Bible study Tuesday night. So please bear that in mind as well. Are there any other announcements? So at this time, I'm going to ask those persons who have a birthday, or if you're leaving the island, please come at this time. I believe Melissa is going back up. Yes, Melissa is going back up, so we want to ask her to come, and we will be looking to pray for those who are leaving the island. Any other persons other than Melissa? You're leaving the island as well? All right, you, you can stand and come. Any birthdays? Any person celebrating a birthday this week? Please come. Other than that, we're going to stand and we're going to ask Minister Clinton to come and he will pray for those who are leaving the island as well as to give the um, benediction. And I pray God's blessing on you throughout the week that we will continue to hold on to him. We'll continue to claim his promises. We'll continue to believe him that he is a good God and that he's able to deliver and to keep us. You're leaving the island? Okay, everybody leaving the island. Nobody looking to take me with them? All right, not you, Melissa. You're going to study. Uh, none of that, none of that. Okay, so we're going to stand now as we look to pray and to ask God's blessing as we dismiss in prayer. Let's bow our heads. Our Heavenly Father, you have been good to us. We have sat at your table and we have been fed with your word. Lord, we give thanks because you have provided us with spiritual food. Lord, we ask that our souls, having been watered, that we'll be able to bring forth fruit and to prosper others during this week. We ask now for those who are leaving the island. We ask that you be with them and that their safety we are placing in your hands, Lord, because we know that you are faithful that you're able to keep. We place those with whom they will come into contact. Lord, we ask that they would find favor. We plead your blood over every mode of transportation. Lord, I'll keep it with your mighty hands. Lord, and in any danger, Lord, we ask that you will shut down the arm of the enemy and that these, your children, will remain safe, physically and spiritually safe. So we give thanks through Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and for his sake. Amen. Now let us say the grace of our Lord and Savior, Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit, rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Now all of those, of, um, we're going to make Melissa special. Um, remember I told you her congratulatory kisses and hugs are due so make your way up and celebrate with her and the miss remember what the word of the messenger this morning in the midst of celebration always be mindful of our lord and savior jesus christ Get thee behind Victory today is mine Victory is mine Victory is mine Victory today is mine I told Satan Get thee behind Victory today is mine Joy is mine Joy is mine Every knee 
shall bow and we don't confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow and we don't confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. We've got a victory. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. We've got the victory. Hallelujah. We've got the victory, hallelujah. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Say the defeated, say the defeated, hallelujah. shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow, every tongue confess that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord. Every knee shall bow. Lord, that Jesus is Lord, that Jesus is Lord.